Hi, my name is Marcy Morgan. Savannah Cruz, Natalie Lawson, David McKenzie, and I will be discussing fertilization. Today, there are so many ways that we can recycle, but nature has given us a natural process for disposing of our organic materials. Natural fertilization is just one way to turn all of those unused materials into a useful resource instead of going to the landfill. Throughout, we will explain everything one needs to know about the process to better conserve our environment. This will include necessary steps and the materials that you will need to be successful in this recycling method. So the first main point in the body is to explain to the audience what fertilization is. So fertilization is a natural recycling system that converts organic material into humus. It is a material that can be added to soil to help plants grow. It recycles organic materials and produces a soil conditioner. It is rich in nutrients and acts as a natural pesticide for soil. Fertilizing has led to healthier plants and will help them grow bigger and better since the soil is much richer. It holds onto nutrients and water and not only benefits your plants, but also helps with pollution in the air. Fertilizing keeps your plants healthy and happy by increasing the production of bacteria and fungi that breaks down the organic matter that creates humus. It reduces the methane emissions from landfills and lowers your carbon footprint. Food scraps and yard wastes make up 20-30% to 30 of what we throw away when it could be broken down instead. Fertilization sounds really amazing for gardeners, but it gets even better. Fertilizer actually will save you money in the long run. You aren't required to purchase as many garden products or machinery to compost efficiently. It can also reduce having to pay for trash removal and the large amount of costs that come along with it. Fertilizing is also a very simple task. You do not have to worry about yard wastes or taking care of other garden needs such as bagging leaves. All you do is add them to your current bin and these wastes magically turn into humus. It is a great alternative to landfilling as it takes part of a decent percentage of trash thrown away each year otherwise. To be exact, Waste accounts for almost 20% of the total amount of trash thrown away each year. Choosing to fertilize increases the quality of your soil and you are least likely to have to destroy the organic material. The top materials for you to fertilize go from paper, plastic, glass, metal, plastic, food scraps, wood, and even yard and garden residues. Learning to fertilize is a very simple task and individuals involved in gardening or farming should be well aware of what fertilizing is and the benefits that come along with it. It is not only a breakthrough in benefiting our environment, but also benefits the quality and growth of plants. There are some things one needs to fertilize, but it doesn't compare to the materials if you don't compost. These are various ways that you can fertilize and learn from the basics of exactly the small amount of materials and effort you need in, to know in order to fertilize properly. For the second main point, you would focus on what you need to fertilize or create the compost. Fertilizing is a great way to use the foods in your refrigerator that have expired, therefore eliminating waste. The best types of food for a compost are organic and high in fiber. These would include eggshells, fruits and vegetable scraps, coffee grounds, and many more. There are also non-food items such as dry leaves, shredded newspaper, straw, and many others that are just as useful. However, there are foods that are not meant to be put in a compost. For example, onions and garlic would not help because it would keep away natural decomposers, such as worms. Others would include foods high in saturated fat and grease, like meat and dairy products, but also manure and branches. These create a smell that would attract unwanted animals, such as rodents, dogs, and flies. Once you have the do's and don'ts of what to put in your compost, there are a few things you need for the fertilizer. This includes places with lots of oxygen to help with the smell and moisture to help with decomposition. You also need a pile large enough to maintain heat and a bin to store the compost in. Once you have all the materials, it will help lead into the next point of how to fertilize and what the steps are. The point is regarding how to fertilize and the steps to do so. There are a few steps in order to make fertilization work. The first thing to do is get a bin and find an area to place the bin in. It doesn't matter if the area is sunny or shaded. Having it in a shadier spot will make the process work slower, but it will still work. In the bin, you will need two, to, two inch to eight inch thick layers of different materials. 
Some examples of material that can go into the compost are any kind of fruit and or vegetable pieces, used tea bags, used napkins, etc. In between each of the layers, sprinkle some soil. Water needs to be added to the fertilizer to make it moist. If you are using vegetable pieces in your fertilizer, place those in one of the middle layers of the fertilizer. Mix your compost occasionally so that new oxygen can be introduced to the mixture. A compost can take anywhere from six months to one year to be ready. When the materials have broken down, the mixture should be a dark brown color and you shouldn't be able to see the original material that was added to the compost. After the fertilizer is done, it can be used as a compost for soil. If you use it as a fertilizer, the most effective way is to use equal parts of fertilizer and soil and mix them together. With these steps, you can make it on your own and use it for different purposes like reducing waste and creating a fertilizer for soil. In conclusion, preserving the planet in which we live in is important and recycling is a great way to help. This method of reducing the amount of waste and conserving soil is essential. Fertilizing is a prime example of how we can make a positive impact on nature. I hope everyone listening learned something and broadened their understanding of composting and how the process works, including the items and things needed to be an efficient fertilizer. I hope everyone was able to learn these simple steps to be productive when performing a fertilization method.